Yeah. It worked. Oh, and it worked, really? Yes. Yeah. There you are. One, one thing uh, to note is what usually causes issues oh, like this, yeah. uh, very important, usually, not always, yeah. bad charging cables or cheap charging cables. Right. Okay. So that's something to note here. Yeah. We did buy an extra one, which is a cheap one, yeah. three weeks before this is... Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it says I'm live, but... Okay, there we go. So we got a iPhone 6 here. I'm going to show you how to diagnose the TriStar issues. Um, not fully, I've done most of the diagnosis. I'm going to show you how to repair it as well. So the symptoms of this are, it's got issues with charging, it's boot looping. They also replaced the battery because it had issues with charging and it was boot looping. That didn't fix it. It's still boot looping even if I'm booting off the power supply or uh, a new battery. And iTunes doesn't recognize it, so that's even with a new charging port, it doesn't rec it's not being recognized. That's the most common symptom actually. If it's not being recognized by iTunes, it's TriStar usually. So I'm gonna strip it all down, take the board out. It's probably one of the most simplest um, micro soldering repairs you can do. So it's a good way to pra practice. Another thing I've noticed is that the battery is kind of expanding. Maybe a tiny bit, or is, actually that's a bend in a phone. You see there's like a bulge here because this phone is pretty bent, as is typical with the iPhone 6. So what I like to do is, just to keep organized when I'm doing board repairs, I like to put everything in this tray, in this iFixit tray here, just in case anything else comes in. I muted it just in time. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't sneeze when you got a hot iron to the board. <laughs> what do you mean? Because that, that happened to me once. You sneezed onto the board? No, that's not the issue. That is not the issue. Sneezing onto the board, that's not the issue. The issue is when you have a hot iron in your hand and you take away a, a bunch of components with it. So that, that's what happened when I, when I first started. So. Was that the iPad? You told that you? was an iPad mini, yeah. Yeah, I did a uh, connector replacement on an iPad mini. I slept. I had to replace the iPad mini. But the customer was happy. He had a almost new refurbished iPad mini and his, his was in a bad state anyway. So if you need to sneeze, take the iron away. Don't do it. What will help as well is if you have a nice board holder while doing this repair. I wouldn't just tape it to the table. It's annoying when you need to turn the board and stuff like that. There we are. So here's the board. So it's under, underneath this shield. Underneath that shield. Make sure you remove the antenna. I gotta just bend it back, it's fine. Now, if you're newbie, you may want to cover the NAND. If you don't know like what heat to use, and don't ask me what heat to use because it's always different depending on what machine you have. You're just not gonna have to test when solar melts at what areas of the board. For example, if something is connected, it's got a lot of ground connection, it's going to be harder to melt. So this is a nice uh, board holder I had from Union Repair. There we go. There's only this shield. Only that one. Uh, I'm going to turn my hot air on. I got mine mounted to the, to the desk, so it's pretty neat. It's a bit loud, maybe. Use enough heat. And put some upwards pressure on it as well. Because you want to take the shield off as soon as it melts. If this was on a desired temperature already, it would be off in two seconds. So, Which in my case, I usually have it on like 400 something. Again, this may be different to what you have. There you go. So that's TriStar. Underneath all that black underfill stuff. Or overfill, I guess, in this case. And you need to take that underfill off. It's, it's quite easy on TriStar. I'm gonna use like medium heat. To, I'm gonna use two, about 230 degrees C. This, in my case, is not enough to melt solar. For some people it is, depending on what station you have. 
and I like to use my titanium tweezers, my super duper fine titanium tweezers. If if you're not experienced with this, you need to cover the nuns. And I just slowly get rid of it. I point it away from the NAN chip. If this is your first time doing it, chip orientation does matter. There, right there, is a dot that indicates in what orientation it goes. So, what I usually do is when I'm not when I'm not familiar with a device or a chip, I put a mark here, indicating where the dot goes. It's really hard to get in between these and sometimes you will pull these while putting the TriStar. I'm going to use a different tool for this. So that should be fine. This side is challenging. I often pull um, these components here. But it's easy enough to get them back on. So hopefully that's clear enough and it won't um, cause any interference with those components. So now we're going to put some flux on. The one I use, which to be honest I'm not really a fan of. Chipquick SMD291. It's quite fluidy, so this is maybe not the best, um, not the best one I've used. Because it, it runs away really, really quickly. So I need to keep shoving it on sometimes and good enough for this anyway. Adjust the temperature now. I may go to, let's see, maybe about 450 degrees C. This may be way too high for, for most stations actually. And airflow 2 out of 10 in my case. So 20% or 20 out of 100, whichever station you have. Why this is heating up, I'm gonna preheat it a bit. I'm gonna not go full in with my nozzle yet. Keep the ball warm. Number one, so I don't have to use high heat for a long time. Because it's right next to the NAND, we don't want to damage the NAND. Uh, yeah, it'll keep it nice and safe then. It'll be a really clean pull. Hopefully I don't pull these little components over here. I'm going in for the kill now. There we are. No pull pads on that and the components are still there. So remember the orientation. Remember the or this is very important. If you put the TriStar on the wrong way, you're gonna screw yourself with that. We can dispose of that one. And now there's some cleanup work we need to do. Now the one we use, the TriStar chip, uh, is the one from the iPhone 7 Plus anyway and the iPhone 7. They are backwards compatible with the older ones. So you want to remove all this black stuff. Now me personally, I have a JBC Naze 2B, which is an excellent station, except the soldering um, tips are really expensive and they're also very sensitive because they're so small. So I want to clean this to the best of my ability so I don't ruin my tips too much. So let me clean this off. This is isopropyl alcohol, uh, alcohol 100% on a cotton bud. So you can see that's a lot cleaner. So now we're gonna clean up this grid of balls and then place our new chip. Hmm, my capture device just crapped out. Ah, there we go, okay. So you missed the part where I actually, <laughs> uh, where I actually polish these balls. <laughs> I don't know what, I, what other way to say it. So these are nice and shiny now, as they should be. There's no nice way of pulling this. And these are nice, nice round shiny balls.
<laughs> and I'm gonna grab my TriStar chip now. Um, just for clarification, this chip is 610A3B, which is for iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. Probably another hour or so. Again, keep in mind the orientation is dot on there for a reason. So this will flow into place now. You, you, you will be able to see it when we flow this back into place, that it'll uh, just snap into place. Surface tension takes care of that. So I'm gonna have my nozzle here further away, just to preheat it. It's gonna swim around a bit. Sometimes it's a good idea to hold it. There you are. So you saw that, that went snapped straight into place. Even if you have a shaky hand, that's how you can get around that. So that's perfect now, it's perfectly square. So again, this is isopropanol alcohol, 100%. And a standard cotton bud. If this is your first time doing it, it's probably a good idea to test it before you put the shield on. But this went quite smoothly in my case. So I'm feeling quite confident that this is going to work. Put the shield back on. Here we are. Hold it there until it goes back into shape. And here's what what else I like to do. If you have a fume extractor, turn it on. This is a really quick way of cooling it. Put it in the opening and that cools it really quickly. We're gonna see if it fixes the boot looping issues. Maybe it doesn't. We don't know yet. Because the tricep could have caused software issues that keeps it from booting anyway so as long as the computer recognizes it we know that the tricer repair has been successful so let's test it out so i'm not expecting much here it's probably going to still boot loop maybe it's fine but it it can't still boot loop so let's put it on charge it does take charge and actually immediately what I notice is it's taking more charge than it used to. Still boot looping now. Okay, let's see if iTunes recognizes it. Hmm, it doesn't. Ah, it has found it. All right, let's try an update. Oh no. Really, all this work for nothing. It's got NAND issues. It's got NAND issues. Yeah. Oh, Error 9. But you wouldn't have known that before, eh? No. They're, yeah, that's unlucky. That's very unlucky. <laughs> okay. So that pretty much... So it basically gave me an Error 9 on updates. That almost confirms that there's a NAND issue anyway. So, Which was probably the initial issue as well as the TriStar. So the... Boot loop likely was caused by the uh, NAND. The issue with it not being detected by iTunes is caused by the TriStar. Now it's being detected, but it still has a boot looping issue and it's giving me error 9 on an update, which is uh, Come in. definitely NAND. Hello. Hi. Hi. How can we help? Um, I got a phone in yesterday. I don't know if I'm waiting for a call or whether. Oh, right. Time. This, that, this is actually the one you're working on, isn't it? Oh, okay. oh yeah. 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 But good that you're here. <laughs> so basically the issue is it's, it's something called NAND the NAND issue is not something that's well it can be repaired but it's not necessarily economically viable okay. so I would say most likely this phone is a write off right. uh, okay. but there's no charge for it anyway okay. I'm going to try one thing okay. um, since your data is technically lost on there anyway okay. 
I'm gonna try restore and see if that works. I doubt okay. it'll work, but okay. just no, just to, uh, to rule that out anyway. So this is actually going a bit further now. I'm not I'm not saying it's gonna work, <laughs> but this is go this is going a bit further than it did before. Yeah. That would be awesome. I'd be I'd be very surprised. Even if it just lasted till Christmas, it would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it, because this is a restore instead of an update, um, it's going a bit further than a bit did, but that doesn't mean it's not going to fail. So, <laughs> error, my, error 9 usually always means none. It yes, worked. It, it did a restore. But? Well, it did a restore, so it's, it's continuing now. So, this may actually work. So, so it was it was try so. Factory settings then, is it? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So, that's the downside. Um, obviously, if you, if you had anything on there. <laughs> Yeah. On there, that yeah. That we got, yeah. Just waiting for it to turn on now. Okay, that was interesting. So restore fixed it, and it's back on, and it's all good. It looks like that TriStar actually completely corrupted the firmware. I haven't run across that one yet. So let me see if the other charging port works. If it doesn't, that's fine. We're gonna include that. It does work. Interesting. Let's see if it gets recognized by iTunes. No, but it doesn't get recognized by iTunes. Okay, so the charging port is, the, is an issue as well. So I'm going to do a charging port replacement real quick. So we got TriStar charging port. I know it was the TriStar because it's obviously we tested the charging ports anyway. Uh, software corruption. So I'm going to guess a dodgy charger that caused both of the main issues and then as a side effect also the other issue with the software. Whatever charges they're using, burn it with fire. There you go, old charging port. So this should be all good to go now. Taking charge, back to life. So after TriStar repair, um, charging port repair. So replacement transfer, replacement char charging port replacement. And a full restore, that's what brought it back to life. Um, I'm gonna take a guess that charging cables may be an issue. So we're gonna address that as well, just in case. It yeah. worked. Oh, and it worked, really? Yes. Yeah. There you are. Excellent. There we are. Okay. One, one thing uh, to note is what usually causes issues oh, like this, yeah. uh, very important, usually, not always, yeah. bad charging cables or cheap charging cables. Right. Okay. So that's something to note here. Yeah. We did buy an extra one, which is a cheap one. Yeah. Three weeks before this is... Exactly. Out. There so you go. Yeah. <laughs> 